how to fight and punch like MMA, UFC fighter, free Krav Maga techniques. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your jab awesomely powerful and fun. Oh, strong jab by Nate. Are you listening? Damn. Hi, my name is Edmund, I'm a Krav Maga expert. If this is your first time here and you are into Krav Maga, martial arts, self-defense and fighting, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss our videos. And real quick, before I show you how to make your job awesomely powerful and fast, let me know in the comment section below your most pressing Krav Maga questions so I can answer them in the future videos. Okay, there are three ways to make your job much more powerful and faster. Number three, first of all, make sure you start in a good fighting stance. What I mean by good fighting stance is your arms have to be on both sides of your face, on each side of your face, not somewhere in the middle. That's the biggest mistake I see all the beginners doing all the time. So if you think about physics in there, when you are starting in the middle of your face, quite often uh, people are covering the face here and the face is in the middle of the circle. What I mean by the circle is, for a punch to be powerful, you have to start rotating your body. So left or right, your body has to rotate. So if you are starting in the middle of the rotating circle, what happens, the rotation doesn't matter really because what you are doing at the same time only, you are using the, your tricep to make the punch happen. That's very inefficient. What we want to do on the other hand is you want to bring this hand from too close to the middle of the circle, outside a little bit so the rotation matters. You are throwing the punch and the rotation brings a lot of power to it. So start not in the middle of your face and outside a little bit on each side of your face. If you are a beginner, I would really recommend putting your arms your palms against your face. Actually, this is a good touching reference point. So don't keep your hands somewhere high because you pro probably you hear that all the time, keeping your hands high and your chin low. But that's, there's no reference to it. When you are much more advanced, you can play with that around a little bit. That's not a problem. But uh, for the beginning, I would advise strongly reference point being your face, touching your face on each side with relaxed three nails here, three fingers on each side but touching on each side, not somewhere too close to the center. What will happen then, if you are touching on each side, now the rotation, the throw of your shoulder forward with the rotation of your body will matter. That will spin the punch and will make it much, much faster and stronger. Then you will connect with huge power. Another reason not to keep your hands in the middle here, this might work for boxers because they don't need to worry about kicks, but if you will notice in Krav Maga or any other type of martial arts or fighting sport, by keeping your hands in the middle of your face, you are missing lots of kicks. I mean, you can't even see the legs of the opponent. That's a bad idea. You can't see what's coming towards you and you will not even know what hits you. So opening up a little bit, putting your arms on each side of your face with relaxed, relaxed hands. You don't have to clench your fist here. Actually, when you clench your fist here, you're making yourself much slower. When I clench close to my face, when I'm throwing the punch, already all these muscles here are tense and I'm kind of slowing it down a lot. If you relax, loosen up, and throw it, then you've got all this speed, powerful, dynamic punch. Okay, so we've covered that part. Make sure you're standing properly in the first place. So we've covered the rotation. That's extremely important, it's good. Once you rotate the shoulder to the front as you are punching. Number two, the punch can be very artificial if you just rotate on the spot. You are just rotating here, wherever you're standing. What we want to do is shift our body weight forward as you are punching. So when you punch, you are shifting forward at the same time. Not only rotating, but also shifting towards the target. Kind of think of penetrating the target, not only hitting and touching, but going through. So your whole body weight has to go with it. Reason number one is full extension. If you look at people like Nate Diaz here, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Shoulder is in front of his face, his elbow is straight, his arm is straight, and he's reaching like two meters away from himself. It's an awesome punch, what he's doing, very much extended as fully as possible all the way all the way extending here plus the shoulder goes to the front front of your face and you are reaching as fast as, as far as possible doesn't matter how strongly you punch if you don't connect so make sure every strike you are doing is fully extended and you are reaching as far as, as far as possible the shoulder rotation matters also because that adds another 20 30 centimeters on top of punch like that and a bonus tip for you always think of punching like in a tunnel. Your head is low, your hands are up, and there's a tunnel here. You're throwing the punch, your fist is in the tunnel, and it should come back within the tunnel here. So I'm never punching and dropping my hand somewhere low and then coming back to the tunnel. The tunnel is only here. Throw it and come back, throw it and come back. The tunnel is only here. Throw, come back, throw, come back. Never make it go lower, 
higher won't happen, but lower happens all the time. I see people kind of circling all the time like this, or going a little bit sideways and coming back here. Straight and come back. There's a tunnel here, remember that. So make sure your extension is full. Otherwise, if you don't connect, you have zero chance to knock someone out. The idea of a jab is not necessarily to knock someone out in the first place, but there's no excuse not to make it a powerful, strong punch. And if you're strong enough, you can do a lot of damage. And if your technique is behind it. So now you know how to make your jab extremely powerful. Um, knowing it is one thing, but then put that into practice and go on the pads, go on the punching bag and do it a lot of times. Muscle memory is something which builds over, over time, so don't think it's going to happen just because you punch a few times. Just because you jab once or twice and you are successful, it doesn't mean it will stay there under stress and in fighting and sparring. So make sure you put the work in and you put the time into it and become an amazing Krav Maga fighter. Now tell me in the comments below which tip did you like the most? Which one are you going to pay attention the most in your next training? And make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get our future videos. Thanks for watching, stay safe, keep training and I'll see you in the next video.